Okay, here we see the, the aorta and we can follow the aorta and uh, one should be aware that the normal diameter of the aorta is declining from granularly to caudally. If this is not the case, then an aneurysm of the aorta should be suspected. But here there is a normal decline of the anterior posterior diameter of the aorta uh, from uh, granularly to caudally. Then we move to the transverse plane, transverse section. Uh, and here the right of the patient is in the left, is the left of the image. Um, here we look first for the different vessels and different structures that we can recognize. What do we recognize from dorsally on? Here is the spine. Then we see here the aorta and to the right the cable vein, the inferior cable vein. And the aorta, as it is an artery in cross section, is round, whereas the inferior cable vein, as a vein, is more flattened and also the content is uh, dark compared to the content of the aorta and that's because of the arterial flow uh, the pulsations give rise to some echoes whereas in a vein there is a more steady flow then what can we see what else can we see we can see the different vessels that arise from the aorta here first the uh, celiac trunk which gives rise which gives rise to the splenic artery and the hepatic artery here you see this this image then when we move a little bit more color with the transducer then we see here a vein this is the splenic vein which here will join together with the superior mesenteric vein to, fo to form the portal vein. Now, in front of the splenic vein, which is some kind of marker in fact, you can see the pancreas, and in the pancreas you can see a tiny channel, this is the pancreatic duct here, and uh, so this is the tail of the pancreas, mostly partly clouded by gases from the stomach or from the intestines. Here the, uh, the body of the pancreas and here the head of the pancreas. When we move a little bit more colony, then we have here the superior mesenteric artery the superior mesenteric vein so called spectacles image and here the cable vein and the aorta we see here the right uh, renal artery which lies uh, behind the cable vein uh, the left renal vein runs in between the aorta and the superior mesenteric vein as you can see here and this structure here is the pillar is a pillar of the dark vein. now at the other side here ventrally we see here the left liver and this is one of the ligaments of the liver it is the round ligament uh, which separates the left liver lobe from the segment 4 uh, which belongs in fact anatomically to the to the left liver but uh, it lies at the right of the round ligament or the falciform ligament also called falciform ligament and the gallbladder which you see here and this is the right kidney and now we move uh, to the left intercostal sections or in the left uh, frontal plane and then we visualize the spleen 
So this is the spleen. Here we have the diaphragm and the left kidney, which is always hidden a little bit in between the costal uh, shadows. And also the parenchyma, the renal parenchyma, the different um, papillae and the sinus renalis. So then we ask the patient to move to the to the left side and then we perform a subcostal examination um, and then this is the ideal uh, position to visualize the liver hilum. Uh, what we can see here is the cable vein with the cross section of an artery which is the right uh, renal artery which uh, runs uh, behind the cable vein then here you see the gallbladder and this these are the different structures of the liver uh, hilum you see here the portal vein uh, you see here the main bile duct and you see here also a tiny vessel uh, and this is uh, a branch of the hepatic artery can you take a deep breath once again? Uh, here you see um, the um, hepatic uh, vein with no or, or a distinct, uh, a very discrete uh, delineation, uh, whereas the portal vein branches they have a clear uh, lining as you can see here. So this position approaches a little bit the hilum of the liver towards the surface so that it is better visualable and that you can appreciate also the uh, main uh, bile duct and the intrahepatic uh, bile ducts are not dilated. One can also appreciate here the possible difference between the echogenicity of the renal parenchyma and the liver parenchyma. So we can move again to the, to, to the back. Then uh, we move now to the, to the lower abdomen, uh, where we can do um, So we move now to the to the lower ab abdomen, and here we perform um, transversal and longitudinal sections uh, using the bladder as an acoustic uh, window. We visualize now the, the lower abdomen in a transverse section using the bladder as an acoustic window, and in a transverse section, this uh, bladder has the as an um, square aspect. Uh, behind it is completely uh, translucent here are some artifacts and here uh, we see the prostate and the uh, seminal vesicles uh, which can be seen here in um, longitudinal section the bladder has a more uh, triangular uh, aspect with here the, the prostate and the uh, seminal vesicles. So sometimes it's uh, quite difficult to visualize uh, the pancreas because of uh, gases, and then a trick uh, could be the, to ask the patient to come in upright uh, position, and then uh, it is possible that the gases uh, move away. Um, and here, for example, you can very well uh, see the visualize the pancreas here just ventilating from the uh, splenic vein. Uh, and uh, in the pancreas, you can see the pancreatic uh, duct uh, as a whitish line, small whitish line here. Here is the left uh, liver. This is the spine, this is the aorta, this is the cable. 
superior cable vein and this is the superior mesenteric artery. Thank you.